we're in for such an exciting opportunity like this. I could hardly sleep last night because we have an author, somebody who's written books that you could buy in the bookstore. She is here today to read her brand new book that you can't even find on the shelf yet. So if you went to Barnes and Noble, if you went to your school library, you couldn't even find it to buy it yet. So we have today Miss Kalkalia Yang. And I was telling you earlier, she went, her cousins went to school here. She went to Como Elementary and to Harding High School. So she was a student just like you in St. Paul schools. So she's gonna read her book today. If you can help me welcome Miss Yang to read, um, read her new book for us. So The Rock in My Throat by Kao Kalia Yang, illustrated by Ji Mei Lin. These are called end pages. Okay. Dedications. This is my dedication. For everyone who has trouble speaking, trouble being heard. For everyone who has lived without understanding on their side. G. May's dedication for my parents. Recess is the hardest time of the day. All the kids are playing. Some are on the playground and others are in the field by the side of the school. There's a group on the pavement in front of me. The teachers are all busy watching over the kids and talking. I look at the sky, I look at the ground. I look at my feet, I look at my hands. I look all around so the people can't see that I'm lonely. I'm relieved when I see a feather on the ground. It is a gray feather, a small one, like dandelion fluff, only a little bigger. I pick it up. It is soft in my hands. It is mysterious. I hold it in one hand. I touch it with my other. I study it. I am more interested in the feather today than I was interested in the leaf yesterday. After school, I tell my mother about the sky and the ground. I tell her my feet are small, but my hands might grow large. I tell her about the feather I found, the feather I have in my pocket. My mother says in Hmong, Her words make me stop talking. I feel the feather in the pocket of my jeans become smaller and smaller. Inside my pocket, my right hand reaches for the place where the feather is, afraid that it will disappear. Later, I look at my mother across the table from me. I will never tell her about the moment I decided to stop talking if I can help it. I don't want to be like the many people who speak English. There's a rock in my throat now, and it grows heavier by the day. I don't want to be like the woman in the store, the woman who tapped her hand on the counter while my mother tried to ask where the light bulbs were, but didn't know the English words. The one who looked away when my mother said, I'm looking for the thing that makes the world shiny. The English words in my mother's mouth were sweet and sticky like candy, and they wrapped themselves up in her teeth. Her tongue tried to free the words, but it took time that the English-speaking people don't have. That day, the woman grew bigger and bigger behind the counter. My mother and I grew smaller and smaller in front of it. Now, I blink and blink and blink. Across the dining table, I shrug at my mother, letting my shoulders go up and then down. I say, Could you both here? At first, no one noticed when I stopped talking at school. I continued to sit at my assigned desk. I continued to keep my desk clean, my hands to myself. I continued to keep my eyes on the teacher at the front of the classroom. One day, my te our teacher is sick. We have a substitute who looks a lot like our teacher. She doesn't know who any of us are, but she has a list with our names on it. She calls them one by one. My last name starts with a Y, and I know I'm last. I try to clear my throat. I listen as all of the kids say, hear when their names are called. Trying to get the air out of my mouth feels like I'm pushing my heart up into my throat. When the teacher says, Kao Yang, I really try to say hear, but the only sound I'm able to make is a shaking cough. 
She says louder, scanning the room, trying to find me among the desks. The teacher finds me because all the other children are looking at me. They are not all mean looks. A few of them, the nice ones, show on their faces that they hurt a little for me. I dig into the carpet of our classroom with the tip of my shoes. I want the floor to open up and suck me down through the thin carpet, through the thick cement, through the pipes, through the basement, through the ground, all the way to the core of the earth so that the burning in my face would feel cool next to the plasma underneath everything. Instead, I raise my hand, feeling the heat rise from my throat. The substitute looks at me and smiles. Next time, speak a little louder. All day long, the volume of my listening to her voice is turned up on high. I can't focus on the math problems in my worksheet. When it is free writing time, I can't write anything at all. Every time she asks a question, I look away so that she doesn't ask me anything. I'm exhausted when I get home. I'm exhausted every day after that. I'm exhausted every time I go to school. I'm exhausted every time we're in the world that speaks English. The only place I'm able to rest is at home. Everyone at home speaks Hmong, my mother, my father, my older sister, and my aunts and cousins and uncles when they visit. Everyone speaks normally to everyone else. It is a song uninterrupted and it flows and flows. It is time for parent-teacher conferences. The teacher sits on one side of the table. My father, mother, older sister, and I sit on the other. The teacher wants to know, does Kao speak at home? My sister says, in home. This teacher also wants to know if Galia speaks at home. My father and mother look at each other, and then my mother says, tell her Galia speaks all the time. My sister says in English, my mother wants me to tell you that at home, Kao speaks all the time. The teacher bites her bottom lip a little, flattens the line of her mouth, looking at me like I'm a puzzle. The teacher stops biting her bottom lip and the corners of her mouth lift in a smile. She says, Kao is doing well in everything, but she won't talk at school. I turn the volume of my listening down. I focus on the wall behind my teacher's head. I imagine the concrete crumbling in the world outside coming in, the birds, the wind, the leaves touching at their tips. They're clapping for me. But the hands in my lap are clasped tight together. In the car on the way home, my, mother, my family is quiet. Once in a while, my father looks at me through the rear view mirror. My mother turns her head to check on me. My sister pats my hand. They all feel bad for me. I feel bad for all of us. Our brown car coughs into the air every few seconds. Paws of smoke rise behind us. No one says anything. I know we all have rocks in our throats and each of us is trying our best. The problem is, Mine has grown too big and heavy for me to move. Recess is the worst time of the day. The pebble I've picked up is the size of the tip of my little finger. Its surface is gray but has speckles of white. In the light of the sun on my palm, the white sparkles like diamonds. It is the most interesting thing I have ever seen in my life. The girl in front of me speaks very clearly and slowly. She says, do you want to play with me? All of my heart wants to play with her, but the weight of the rock is too heavy for my tongue to lift. My throat works, but the words don't come out. The rock grows bigger and bigger as the seconds pass. I don't know how to just watch it, so I grip the little pebble in my palm. I don't look at her, and I shake my head, no. When she walks away, I repeat her name again and again. Julia, Julia, Julia Chang. I tell myself, one day, maybe she can be my friend. Now that is the author's note. That is me when I was in second grade. So like all of you, and the story is true. So when I was a student, I didn't talk in school. I couldn't talk. 
I couldn't talk in school. Do you want me to read the author's note? Raise your hand if you do, and I'll read it. Okay. I was six years old and my family came to America as refugees of war from the camps in Thailand. For the first years of my life, Hmong was the language I had built my home in. When I entered school, English was everywhere. Slowly, I picked it up in bits and pieces. I liked the way the words tasted different in my mouth, the way they did not need more air to float, the way they connected to one another. Not like words holding hands, but like magnets and metal. Everything changed when I was seven years old. I became a selective mute in English halfway between first and second grade. I stopped talking at school. I got by with nodding and doing the thumbs up. In fact, I wouldn't speak English voluntarily until I went to college. In college, I learned how to whisper. When I became a writer, some of my childhood teachers came to my events to hear my voice. They knew me. They all said that I hadn't changed very much, but they had never heard me talk before. A few of them wept, hearing my voice for the first time. One of the big questions in all of my years of silence was why? At 43 years old, I'm finally ready to answer. This book is that answer. I'm answering the children who asked the question directly and sincerely all those years ago when I couldn't answer them. The children who are trying to understand. I'm answering the children who, like me, were also quiet and weren't sure why or were afraid of hurting the people around them with their honest answers. I want each child who is afraid to talk, unable to find the words, to know that sometimes it takes a long time for us to understand and an even longer time to express ourselves. I'm answering the question for the second grade child who was me, young Delia, who wanted and wished desperately to one day be able to answer this question for herself, her teachers, and especially her family. Mother, you used to say, I don't understand why you won't speak at school. I used to tell you, would you both hear? I don't know either. Mother, I can tell you now. As a child, I saw the people who spoke fluent English walk away from your efforts to be understood, and I felt your pain. I couldn't protect you, so I did the only thing I knew to do. I stopped talking. In English, it was my great revolution against a world I knew was not listening to you. I couldn't control when the rock in my throat started weighing me down. I felt sad and sorry that I couldn't speak for myself or for you for so many years. But those years have come and gone. I now know that sometimes the words that I cannot speak into the world, I can write in it. Now when I think back to all of those silent years, when I listened and listened, I'm filled with gratitude for all the lessons I've learned. I'm thankful that I know to be patient when others are struggling into language. I understand so well what it is like to be lonely, and in the end, to love and appreciate the people who offer friendship. <laughs> Julia Chang became my friend, first through the letters we wrote to each other, and then later through the life experiences we shared. And that is from the rock in my throat. Julia Chang is a real person. She is my oldest friend in the world, and now we're both mothers, um, but that is from the rock in my throat. Now, I said that I would answer some of your questions, and I'm happy to do so. So if you have any questions for me, raise your hand, I'll call on you, and I'll do my best. What's your name? Julia. How did she get the rock in her throat? How did she get the rock in her throat? That's a great question. Was it a real rock? No. No. It was because I, I felt that there was a rock in my throat. And every time I tried to speak, the rock got heavier and heavier. How many of you know kids in the school or in your life who don't talk in school? Yeah, I was one of those kids and I wanted to write this book because although they didn't talk, there were things that they wished they could say to the world. And everybody, no matter whether you talk or not, wants to be understood. And so I wanted to, to write a book about that. But it wasn't a real rock. It was a rock that, 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 that became, the, that, that grew there. Because my mom doesn't speak English. Even now when she speaks English, she has a very thick accent. And so people don't mm -hmm. listen. People are very impatient. You, you have seen it, right? When somebody is struggling to speak and somebody else is tapping their feet or their hands 
or they're looking at the clock and preparing to leave. So that's what it's about. Right here, what's your name? Ingrid. Ingrid? How long did it take you to make this book? That is a great question. How long did it take to make this book? In America, on average, it takes five years to make a book. I know, five years, a very long time. But I'm a very fast writer. I don't run very fast. I can talk very fast, but I write very fast. So for this one, my... Can you say 2,000 words in one second? I've never tried. But, but it took me just one night to write this book. The first draft came out in one night. It came out in like an hour. My... My editor said, maybe Kelly will write a book about the fact that she never used to talk. My agent said, I think that's a good idea. And within an hour, I had sent a draft back to them. And that draft is essentially this book. We haven't changed very much at all. Sometimes the stories that I write, they've been waiting to be told for a long time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I'm right here. I'll come back. What's your name? Soraya. Soraya. And what's your question? Can, Can you learn some of my language? I love that question. Can we say nyao zhong? What does that mean? It means hello. 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 Right. Nyao zhong. And can I tell you one of my favorite words? Xian lo. Xian lo. Have a big heart. Go into the world with a big heart. Yeah? Xia is heart and law is big. I'm a small person. Yeah, she grew she a lot, but I have a big heart. So she a lot. Right there. What is what is your question? What's your name first? Ariana. And what's your question? I wish I was an illustrator. I can't draw. But I think your question is, how did I become an author? Right. I became an author when my grandma died. I loved her very very much, and she loved me very very much. And when my grandma died, she was very afraid that she would be forgotten. Because my grandma has never been to school. She didn't know how to read and write all of my life with her. And so I became a writer so that the world might, might remember her with me. When I was a kid, when I was your age, every time my grandma had to sign her name, she signed it with a big X that stood in for Julie. And now in my book, my very first book, The Late Homecomer, everybody knows that my grandma's name was Julie. That there was so much there in that X that the world never saw and knew. So that's why I became a writer. Which is to say, I became a writer because I love, I love. Uh, we'll come back right here, yes? If you didn't know how to speak what your mom speaks, then how do you know how to speak it? Oh, if I didn't know how to speak Hmong, then how did I know how to speak it now? I've always known how to speak Hmong, right? Like the authors, the mall was the first home that I built my house in, right? So I, I know a lot about the language. When I speak my language, it's like I'm singing a song. Even now, when I speak English, can you hear that I'm always breathless? Because mall is a tonal language, right? Every breath I breathe into the world carries meaning. In English, I have to wrap the air around units of meaning to make sense to the world. So even today, there are rocks and I have to shape them so they make sense to uh, the English-speaking world sometimes. Right here. Yes. What's your name? Malachi. Malachi. And what's your question? My question is, when you were in school, why did you get scared to talk? When I was in school, why did I get scared to talk? That is such a good question. Because every time I went with my mom and dad to like Kmart or the stores, and my mom and dad tried to ask a question, People never listened. Everybody acted like they were taking up so much time. And so I felt really bad. My dad worked in a factory, Malachi, and his boss used to say, B, you're here to talk to the machines, not to me. And that broke my heart. And so because I didn't know how to be brave enough to protect my mom and dad, I decided that if all of these people didn't want to hear my mom and dad, then they surely didn't want to hear me too. So the next day I stopped talking. And then I couldn't control it anymore. It started controlling me. Thank you. That was such a good question. Now, if you haven't asked a question yet, and you have a question, please raise your hand. Right here. It's your name. My name is Manny. Manny? And what's your question? I'm Mong too. You're Mong like me. It's such an honor to be here to I'm, read to you all. I'm not sad. His name is Lujan. He speaks Mong too. Yeah? That's wonderful. So 
Do you have a Do you have a question for me? No. Well, thank you for sharing that fact. Right here. What's your name? Brady. Brady. What's your question? Um, my mom is happy to do that too. Your mom? That happens to your mom too. Because my mom, she's Spanish, and she's struggling to speak English. English. And you see it, right? And it hurts you. And I wanted to write this book in many ways for a kid like you. You know, because you can speak in English just fine, but sometimes your heart hurts, right? And I think it's so important for that experience to live in the world for the bookshelves, right? So that you know you're not alone, so that you won't be so lonely, because I was lonely watching it, right? Yeah, it made me cry. <laughs> so thank you for being such a wonderful class.